The Mitsubishi 4G63 gets a really bad rap as far as reliability is concerned. So I decided to attend a drag and drive with it. Twice. Here's what happened to my Mitsu powered rear wheel drive Eagle Talon on Drag Week 2022. So we start out day zero, Worldwide Technology Raceway in Madison, Illinois. This is right next to St. Louis, Missouri. Day zero is about teching the car, an open test and tune session, meeting racers pitted near you and impound, stuff like that, just getting the lay of the land. We intended on doing all of it. While unloading the car though, one of the primary fuses on the car popped. We replaced it and that one blew too. And then a second replacement that was a higher amperage. We, you know, upsized it, kept trying, kept popping. We tracked that down pretty quickly. It was the alternator. Somehow, the alternator destroyed a diode that's in line to feed power to the alternator. We happen to have a spare diode, so that was no problem, but we did not have a spare alternator. So to find an alternator, I made a post on social media. I had a bunch of people reach out, send me messages, giving me leads on where I could find uh, either some used or replacement uh, alternators. And actually in line for tech, we had another guy who was local who um, had a buddy who knew something about DSMs. Anyway, longer story short, we found two spares at AutoZone Fresh Rebuilds. And so um, we actually had some of our friends go out and pick those up for us because day zero, anyone can help out. While we were waiting for the alternators, we needed to hurry up and get into tech. So we drove it there under battery power, and then we pushed the car the quarter-ish mile through tech to get through the line. Um, we were like the last car that was actually registered and in line, at least in the lane that we were in. And as you can see, we met some other people you might know. Anyway, we made it through tech and drove the car back to impound under battery power. And by the time I got back to my trailer, I had two alternators sitting there waiting for me to use. It only took a little bit to get the alternator swapped. And then the rain came. So we waited around a little bit and it came pretty apparent that Test and Tune was wrapping up. Obviously, they can't run in the rain, and we were pretty much done for the day. So we packed the car up into the trailer and headed back to the hotel that we had checked into the night before. Day one was going to be an early one. On day one, we were pretty well prepped to make a pass. The day before, after replacing the alternator, we had gone ahead and gotten the car ready to run, so there wasn't a whole lot to do. Um, here's a shot of our car, all prepped, ready to go. This is next to my friend Neil's Ford uh, truck, and this thing is just really sweet. Um, these guys ran Drag Week last year. We met them there. They ran Drag Week this year. It was uh, just really, really cool to see him back out and ready to go. Anyway, uh, we waited in the staging lanes for a bit and then went to make the first hit. Yeah, that did not nearly go to plan. I had made a timing change to the bump box and it just ended up pulling right through the beams. No big deal. I actually pulled back out and gave it another go. Noticing that as well, and you will see some of these guys come out here because they haven't run their car yet. Yeah. Or they haven't gotten where they want it to be. All right, so 895 uh, with a 5 at 150 miles an hour. This was an okay start, but I honestly wanted to be a little faster than that. Um, but before I could really 
be too worried about it. I ended up stopping on the return road, picked up my parachute, and spotted some oil in the engine bay. Um, it turned out that uh, there was a drain plug on the bottom of my catch can. Uh, it, it was there. It, it was subsequently gone. So anything that had been puked in the, the puke tank was completely in the catch pan so it made a pretty good sized mess and instead of making another pass we ended up just spending a few hours cleaning everything up um we went through two or three cans of brake cleaner a few rolls of paper towels and uh tried to get everything ready to go so after that we went ahead and packed up and got on the road now just as a heads up this whole video does actually have video this is not all just uh, photos but the first day or two, I actually don't have any on-road video. Um, apparently, my memory card wasn't big enough, and so we, we've got pictures to cover day one. This is the first checkpoint. It was a random bar with a big beer can. So there we go. Hit that checkpoint and then continued on. Um, the second checkpoint was an old shutdown racetrack next to a gravel pit. There was so much dust. I mean, just it was it coated everything. The car was absolutely coated. The trailer, everything underneath, it was it was gross. Anyway, after checkpoint two, we ended up driving a bit further until we got to the hotel. And at the end of day one, we were in eighth place in the modified class. <laughs> Indy plagued us in 2021. We torched ahead here, and it completely screwed us for the rest of Drag Week. I needed redemption. Also, my mom came down to spectate for the day. And uh, along with my Uncle Dave and Mark, um, yeah, Uncle Scott also has an uncle. It's so meta. Anyway, we prepped the car, but somehow didn't get the car prepped in time for our class call, which was the beginning of the day. So we had to run in the all-run class at like uh, 1.15 p.m. I also just want to take a second to point out this car. It is Jeremy Howell's uh, Flat Fox. And so Jeremy's from Fat House Fab. This car is like so cool. Uh, anyway, Mustangs are cool and all, but... This has a flat plane coyote uh, engine in it, and it is freaking sweet. 2022 was his first year for this car, uh, getting it done and out and ready to go. Uh, the fab work is amazing, and the thing just performs. I mean, it is a beast. So you'll probably see a few other pictures during the rest of this video because I think it's a cool car. Like I said, I had um, some spectators. Thanks for showing me all the love, uh, Mom and Mark and Uncle Dave. It was good to know after the fact. Obviously, did not know you guys were cheering at the time, but I was slightly busy. Anyway, 887 with a 9 at 150.92 miles an hour. I'm totally going to take that. Um, at this point... I went ahead and started actually making update videos. I posted these to social media too, but uh, some people may not have seen them. Hey guys, day two at Indy. We actually just made our one pass for the day. It's been kind of a shit show here. Um, we ended up getting here a little bit late. We had to stop and get some supplies and stuff, but uh, we ran an 887. I didn't think it was that fast. We ran an 887, and so yeah, we are working on getting on the road. 
and uh, see you guys tomorrow at Byron Dragway. Sweet. Yeah, we didn't make it very far up the road. Uh, about an hour. Uh, and then we had an issue with the street drive. Uh, it was hot out. It was mid-90s. And I think that was at least partially responsible for this electrical failure that we had. This is the fuel pump relay socket. And um, it's for the small pump on the car. Uh, it melted. And one of the power terminals going to the relay was just smoked. Um, the power wires were totally fine, though. So... Uh, we pulled off, hit up a gas station and, uh, pulled the bumper off the car and replaced it all and put a spare relay in and it was all good after that. Checkpoint one was some beef restaurant. I don't remember the name of it. It was a nice large parking lot and I'm sure they got some business from it. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have eaten there. Oh, well, after that, we ended up driving into the sun for hours and um yeah as you can see here without sun visors it was a little bit of a challenge i also was about done with sun at this point in time so now we're getting to the part that's tricky for me as far as editing we actually have video from the onboard camera the quality isn't great and it's not complete either but i think you get the gist of it here we are pulling into the second checkpoint for the day well into the evening it was literally called antique quarters I have some family who would probably have loved to browse around this place. Um, it was quite closed by the time we get there, as you can see. We ended up spending a little bit of time here as I wanted to do a bolt check on a few things, and we ended up talking to a few other racers. And as we were getting ready to leave, the Rosers rolled up and wanted to chat with us. So no specific reason we weren't doing anything stupid. They just wanted to see that everything was good. All right, so it's time to get back on the road. Um, yeah, going back to the camera, you know, obviously you can see it's kind of shaky, a little vibrating, not super clear. And all that comes down to uh, the car. The four-cylinder is, by and large, the harshest environment for um, having solid motor mounts. Um, I mean, th this car is a motor plate, and so it tends to vibrate pretty much everything. Um the camera drops in and out and yeah it, it actually gets worse through drag week so as we start out it's not too bad here but you'll see as we progress that i have to make some interesting cuts in order to you know kind of try to make some cohesive video footage of everything that's going on in the car so um it's pretty much how it is for street drives too though um things are just shaky vibrating whatever so that's just kind of the way it is uh yeah here we're actually stopping at applebee's for dinner so it was a little later than we wanted to get to the hotel but you know we thought we'd um, grab some food and so we did that first and then continued our drive um i think we've got about another hour here i've sped this up by like 32x or something so I might get to a point where i'm uh, actually either cutting some video or changing it around a little bit more because kind of don't know how much of this everyone wants to see. I'm also looking to see how I can improve the video for future events, uh, perhaps get a different camera. Um, this is actually a rear view mirror that has a built-in integrated camera that faces forward. And then the rear facing camera is actually, um, it, it's a screen. So the, the rear view mirror itself is a video screen that you can just look up and see what the rear view camera is seeing so it's pretty cool in concept um but the implementation at least on this car is just not that great so here we go we've made it to the hotel and at the end of day two drag week we are in seventh place in our class good night <laughs> So we woke up uh, the morning of day three, hopped in the car, and uh, made our way to the gas station first. Um, this was pretty common. We had to pick up ice, water, any sort of snacks. And then we made our way to the track. Uh, there was a little bit of a hike here between the hotel and Byron Dragway. And so uh, it took us just a little bit to get there. 
I uh, originally thought that this was my first time racing at Byron. Um, we'd come here in 2021, but we actually didn't end up racing uh, because the car was slightly broken. We did make the drive. We did do everything else we needed to do for drag week, but we just were not competitive. So, um, but then I remembered back in 1999, I'd actually come here with a few other DSM buddies and we actually had a race called the DSM versus F body shootout. So I raced here many, many years ago. Uh, here we are pulling in. We had to sign our waivers and then go find a pit spot. Originally, we ended up finding this spot in the grass, um, but the guys in the Tesla uh, actually were all done for the day by the time we got there. So they had made their run and they were ready to go. So they gave us the spot that they were in. There's Jeremy's Fox body again. I told you it was going to make a reappearance. We ended up in the staging lanes next to them and uh, they ended up running first. Now with the onboard camera, we actually did end up catching some uh, time lapses for the staging lanes. So here we are, we're actually covering the windshield with a towel just to help keep everything inside a little bit cooler. It was kind of warm out that day. Uh, so there's Rick putting more ice in the car and we ended up with a few oil downs to wait through um, and yeah, the, the cool thing about all this, though, is that uh, we made it through, and it, there we go. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of neat to see the time lapse of the, the run. Quick and easy, 870 at 152. All right, we are day three. And this is a Byron Dragway. We are uh, finished up as far as our runs are concerned. I'm navigating the pits here. So um, we ran an 870, 152, I think. And uh, yeah, you can see there's a bunch of cars right behind me. I want to make sure not to get hit because, you know, that sucks. Anyway. Lost the nut on my nitrous solenoid, so I'm trying to get it squared away. <clears throat> We're going to do some maintenance on the car. Get on the road. We got 100, 100 and some miles. It's real low. It should be much better than yesterday, hopefully, as far as drive is concerned. It was uh, 200, 270 or something yesterday. So the 100 miles today will be a nice change of pace. Have a good day, guys. One of the more interesting things about Byron was the return back to the pits. Um, we ended up in some traffic. There were people talking to drivers while they were trying to drive. Um, I, I just can't imagine a race car doing too much of that. So anyway, we pulled the lawn job. We got back to our pit space, and then it was time to do some maintenance on the car. I'll go over some of the maintenance items with you on the time-lapse part of the drive. The onboard camera was working at that point, so um, we're all good there. 
Okay, it is time to get on the road. Uh, when we were in Byron, waiting in the staging lanes, the car cooled way down, so once the lanes started moving, I had to strategically warm the car up. I did this by idling the car around 2,000 RPM to put some heat into the motor. It worked okay. Um, I just needed my coolant temps to be over 140 for the nitrous that I used to get up on the converter to work. It's a safety thing in the tune. It was uh, pretty warm on this drive too, but not as bad as the previous trip uh, from Indy to Byron. The good thing about leaving later was that we could enjoy the cooler air and less traffic. It also meant we didn't have to stare at the sun for too long. We drove for about a half an hour and ended up finding an auto zone on the way to our checkpoint. We stopped in and picked up a, a few supplies, checked the hardware section for that M12 nut that we needed for the nitrous solenoid. We purchased the right package but ended up with the wrong nut. We didn't know it at the time and it would come back to bite us later. We figured it out though. It was great to be in Byron and if I had to guess, a majority of the locals took the day off from work to see drag wheat cars make passes. So many people showed up and we talked to people for literally hours while we were doing maintenance on the car. It was very cool to see the city support their local track. Thanks Byron, this was definitely a memorable part for us. So we drove on into the night. There was only a single checkpoint on this leg of the trip, and it was right here in Elizabethtown. I think the town itself was the checkpoint, and right in the middle of the town there was a sign. It was late enough that we just pulled off to the side of the road, snapped our photo, and continued on our way. And I just have to mention real quick that uh, I was really appreciative of other racers that conveniently left black stripes on the road that we knew that we were following our routes just fine. You can really see them there in Elizabethtown, along with the police officer on the other side of the road. Two signs we were traveling in the right direction. I've got some drive time here, so I can go into more details about the maintenance we did in Byron. Uh, we changed the oil, not that we were losing any or burning it or because we had oil pressure issues, but we just wanted to make sure that about halfway through the trip that we would get that swapped out. So Rick went ahead and did that. Um, then we checked the coolant overflow to find out that it was almost full. This was a big oops for us. Head gasket? Were we just lifting the head? Was it burning coolant? We didn't really know. We briefly thought about swapping head gaskets, which would have been a huge undertaking. It would have taken us a few hours to get done. Instead, we took a chance and uh, warmed up the car, pulled the valve cover, and hot torqued the head. We thought that this would be our best bet without having to replace the head gasket altogether. And uh, we wouldn't know until we got to the track the next day. Oh yeah, right here in the video, we're on the side of the road because we ran into our friends uh, with a truck, Neil and Kent. Uh, we pulled off a bit to see if we could give them a hand. They were having an ignition issue, but we're pretty well squared away for the night and had a few things that they were going to try. Um, they ended up going through a handful of starters and um, having, you know, this ignition issue. They didn't ultimately continue on drag week. It was a bitter way to end for them, I'm sure. Um, I think Neil is changing his setup for the off season or on the off season, and uh, can't wait to see his truck back out. And then we finally pulled into the hotel and went and found some dinner, and then called it a night. <laughs> Day four was probably one of the colder mornings. We uh, had to have the fan on to clear off the window and then get on our way. At this point, we were pretty well into our groove. Wake up in the morning, stop at the gas station, get ice, head to the track. And you can see that's exactly what we did here. We also lost a trans cooler. We pulled it off, cleaned up the mess, and 
try to go make a pass. And when I say try, I mean try. We were one minute late, apparently, and we were turned away. Ugh, back to the pits. We had essentially a few hours to kill, so we just waited. I got to do a little organizing, uh, post on social media, take just one or two pictures, and then finally they made the all-class call. So we dumped in the ice and rolled on up to the staging lanes. It took a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Eagle-eyed observers may notice that I red lit. The good news is, as long as you trigger the timing system on Drag Week, you are all good. So, rolled on back to the pits. Guys, I forgot to make my walk-in video. I've been doing that every day. Day four, Cordova? Yes. Three Cordova. Cordova. Uh, we just uh, ran 63 at 152 or something. We're getting stuff squared away on the car, getting ready uh, to street drive this thing. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing everyone in St. Louis tomorrow. Have a good day, guys. Bye. We really had to hustle to convert the car over to the street, street trim and get it on the road. Um, today we had a 270-ish mile trip from Cordova back to St. Louis. I pulled the log for the pass and actually saw that the wideband sensor had died right at the start of the pass. So uh, we got a little bit lucky. The tune was close enough that it didn't really matter. We swapped that out. And when I started the car to leave, it was wigging out. And it turns out I forgot that you've got to do a free air calibration on the wideband controller. And so it was all over the place. Oops. We, yeah, just performed the calibration. And then it was all good. On the road, we went about an hour in. We ended up here at this gas station, and one of the worst things that happened on Drag Week was right there. Yep, that was <laughs> really startling. What we did was uh, we scraped against the, uh, the transition into the gas station, um, and you can see right here, it's the suspension of the car. You can see some maybe some concrete dust right there, and, and that catch pan is not supposed to look like that. So... Yeah, we, I, that was kind of rattling for us, but thankfully didn't do any real permanent damage to the car and got back on the road. This was a random fun spot on the trip. I actually pulled out my camera to do one or two videos, which I really hadn't done, and the guys in the Volvo went ahead and passed me. These guys were in third place in Modified, so three and four just driving alongside each other for a bit. It was really cool. I'm going to comment on stuff you saw a few seconds ago. Um, we ended up at the first checkpoint, really not very far outside of Cordova. It was this unnoticeable rest area right off the route that we were on. Uh, we talked with one racer who actually pulled in behind us, and we were sure they left the track before us. Sure enough, they, they missed the checkpoint, had to turn around and get back to it. And later we heard from another racer that they did the same thing. So it was a pretty common occurrence. I think they were trying to trick us the last day. This last leg of the trip was one of the more challenging ones, not just for distance, but because it was also the one with the least amount of gas stations with E85 at them. In fact, we kind of strategically brought spare E85 with us and used some of our race fuel to make it to the E85 station that I just told you about. 
we ended up filling the tank before we left the track, uh, but we also had to pull off the route and refill the tank a little while after leaving the track. But this allowed us to get to the first E85 station we were looking for. Uh, like I said, this last leg is probably where drag week hits you the most. It's the final drive portion of the race. You've made it through these three other legs and you've raced at four tracks. And now it's it's just this last leg and um, the last day of racing and, and that's it. You are truly so close to the end of the event. Um, it is really a, a special feeling uh, to get to this point. Needless to say, you're still a little on edge because you're not done yet. Going through and watching this time-lapse footage, um, you know, the onboard camera has gotten progressively worse. You may have noticed I've already dropped out the rear-facing portion of the footage, mainly because it ended up being crap anyway, um, and it got worse. So I'm piecing together stuff, and we definitely have some things that we want to change in the future that hopefully will improve this. Um, we actually are getting off right here, getting some fuel, and now actually pulling into the last checkpoint. This place was called Motorhead's Bar and Grill, and uh, we got in, snapped our photo, saw that there were a lot of drag weekers having dinner there, and then got on the road. Driving well into the night, lots of things started to pop into my head. Obviously, it was the last day. We weren't really in the top three, but we still wanted to know where we were in the standings. I wanted to know how well the car would perform on day five, what the weather was going to be like the next day. Would, would we actually complete it? We were so close. I could taste it. Would we be able to run one and done the last day? Um, these, yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed the drive too. It was relatively calm. It was peaceful in a weird, loud way, and it was nice to be on the road. Um, this is another thing that I really enjoyed about drag week. The drives are scenic. Um, if not a lot of corn, but you do see parts of the U.S. in a way you don't normally see them. Yeah, there's stuff to do, and we have an objective, and we've got a race tomorrow, but you're not just setting the cruise and thinking about normal life. This really is an adventure. I'm sure the guys who go on motorcycle trips have an idea of what I mean by all this. For 2022, we ended up adding quite a few things to the car, including CarPlay, different headlights, um, more padding to the seats, things like that. It really did make this trip a lot more comfortable. And at the end of day four, we were still sitting in fourth place in the modified class. I paid for that clip, guys. I'm going to use that audio as much as I can. Day five started just as the other days in Drag Week had. Trip to the gas station to get ice and water and then roll on out to the drag strip. This was the last trip to the track for Drag Week. It was threatening rain this day, uh, but we were really determined to get another pass in. Um, we wanted to get there as early as possible, and so we kind of hustled to the best of our abilities. And we hadn't really done a good job of doing that all week. We generally missed our class call every single day, but today we, we were going to make it. So we pulled into the pits, and um, you know, it turns out that my mom uh, drove down from Michigan, and then my Aunt Sarah and my cousin John David from Orlando, Florida came up to watch us finish up the week. So it was very cool to see them. So we got the car prepped as quickly as we could, and then we rolled up to the staging lanes as soon as we were called. And there we are. The line went pretty quick, and we made our final pass.
aforementioned concept, and more lightning is allowed than it is in other classes. Whereas street race is simple bolt-on muscle car stuff. Josh Norris on the right-hand side has got that awesome uh, stack injection going through the hood on his small block Chevy. And just when you think you're done with Drag Week, Drag Week lets you know when it's done with you. This is an ATF leak uh, from my transmission right after the final pass. I had a fitting come loose that I had to tighten by hand, at least well enough to get back to the pit space and get it tightened up with tools. And there we go. My 4G63 had finished Drag Week. Last pass. It's an 849 with a 3 at 160. Ugh, this was a much more satisfying time slip than all the rest that I had received this week. Okay, a little bit different video today. It's day five. I just turned in my slip. Uh, I actually netted an 849 at uh, 160 miles an hour. So uh, heading back to the pits getting the car wrapped up because we are calling it a week um ended up with an 873 average for the week it looks like 153.4 average mile an hour which is uh pretty cool so yeah we uh we're out here we got a little bit late start posting i've been posting every day um pictures in the staging lanes but staging lanes went real quick today so anyway take it easy guys talk to you later so here it is, my official time slip, 873 at 153 miles an hour. Sadly, it was not entirely meant to be. Day five was rained out, and so what Drag Week did was take our day four standings and make those the official average. So my 873 was knocked down to an 879. I'll take it. It is still the fastest drag and drive four cylinder ever. Even with our adjusted average, we still placed fourth in the modified class and we won quickest four cylinder for the event. We've also placed number 86 in the top 100 fastest drag and drive cars in 2022. Hey, you've made it to the end of the video. I appreciate you watching this. I spent so much time putting this together. I, I hope other people find it informative, interesting, entertaining, whatever. If you did, please let me know. Have a good one, guys.